call to order the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, City of Sebastian, Florida, November 21st, 2019. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mr. Roth. Here. Mr. Simmons. Here. Ms. Cottenberg. Here. Mr. Carter. Present. Mr. Reyes. Here. Mr. Kizilbosch. Here. Mr. Eugen. Here. Mr. Alvarez. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would like to just take a second to thank and congratulate Mr. Alvarez and Mr. Simmons for being appointed again to another three-year term. Um, thank you. Your dedication is much appreciated. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, you've all received a copy via computer or otherwise of the minutes of our last meeting and hopefully you've had a chance to review them. The chair would entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of the meeting of October the 17th, 2019. We have a motion, do we have a second? second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to accept the minutes of our previous meeting as, <coughs> re as received. All in favor? Ms. Cumberland. Aye. Aye. Ms. Any opposed? Uh, yeah, we, we, we need to make sure the motion and second is both by, by uh, I'm sorry. regular members or alternates that are sitting in a regular member's seat. Yeah, I'm sorry, so. Mr. Simmons is an alternate member. <laughs> So we need. Um, Sorry about that. Yeah, that's okay. We love you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to have a motion. Madam Chairman, I'll make a motion that we uh, accept the uh, minutes from the previous October seventh meet meeting. I'll of second October seventeenth. I'll second it. Here we received um, an absolutely legitimate motion and second. All in favor. <clears throat> Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Okay. We have uh, no public hearing tonight. We have uh, no unfinished business. Do we have any input from any member of the public? Okay, seeing none, we'd like to have our presentation from Lisa. Good evening. Here we are. Good evening. We've been talking about this for a while. And I just, I, I want you all to be excited about this process. Can everybody, I guess I'm, this is on, I assume. Um, I want you to be excited about this process and not, you know, f fear the workload. Because you're going to be sharing this workload. And, and even though you're the main focus and the heavy lifters, you're going to be sharing that with staff, certainly, with our consultant who you've already met and worked with before, so you're kind of used to their format of things. And of course, the community. They're going to be heavily involved in this. And this evening, I wanted to make sure that we work through the process, the proposed process. So I'm going to go through this whole presentation and then we'll, we'll come back for anything that you don't understand or want more clarity or want to change, okay? And that's why I gave you a copy of the presentation so that you can walk along with me, if you will. So where we're starting from is the 2010 year. Um, that was the last time that the city addressed uh, the, the vision, the comprehensive uh, development plan for the city, and it was projected through 2025. 
we're going to take it forward and create that vision for the city um, that we can implement 15 years into the future to 2040. In Florida Statute 163.3177 specifically gives the guidance and the regulations pertaining to comprehensive plans and what they require, okay? So you're all free to read that. Uh, if you need a copy, we can get you a copy, um, but you can download it. Um, and a comprehensive plan is a set of policies intended to serve as a community's vision and to guide the development of a community, typically over a 10 to 20 year period. So we're following that. Um, and again, we're starting from the ear, which would have been incorporated, the recommended uh, policies and regulations would have been incorporated into what you have or don't have, and I'll get you a copy. Um, but the state requires that these plans by local governments be evaluated every seven years. So our year was done in 2010, but it wasn't adopted until 2012. So in 2019, we received the letter from DEO saying, hey, City of Sebastian, what's your pleasure? And we put into the budget and determined that we really needed to update our comprehensive plan. It was a good time to do that. Uh, we needed to get new data and analysis and really find out how we want to preserve the, the, the vision that a lot of individuals in, have in this community and to see how we can grow while preserving those ideals. Um, and so we have until September 2020. It's a quick time frame, but we're gonna make it happen. Two points to remember from Florida statutes. <clears throat> it is not the intent to come up with the implementing regu regulations. The implementing regulations are the code of ordinances and our land development regulations. This is coming up with the programs, activities, strategies, right, that help us carry through the principles and guidelines, right? What's our vision? What, what do we want to happen, high level, and then it, you know, we'll, we'll determine that through the comprehensive plan, but then they, this rolls down into the <clears throat> regulatory implementing code of ordinances that are law, right? So this is your vision, it's a plan, and then we may later on make codes of law, okay? Paul, or Paul, I'm sorry. Jim, stop me if I overstep my legal knowledge here. I, I, I play, you know, attorney on TV. Um, so anyways, Florida statutes, these are the required elements, okay? And this is what you have in our comprehensive plan. Think about, think of the elements as different parts of a city, of a municipal government or any local government. You have your, your uses on the land, you have your transportation corridors or mobility corridors, even sidewalks are considered in the transportation. You have your infrastructure, you have your preservation of land, you get it, you understand what I'm going with this. Alternative elements are public schools and capital improvement programs um, and economic development elements. We have an economic development element, but we will not be addressing it through this scope. It, it is a time consuming element that we wanna get right and, and we don't have the time nor the resources to do that in this iteration. Um, public schools we have, we will keep in, we will address it again. Um, and the capital improvement program, we're going to put that into each element. We're gonna embed it into each element and, and kind of, well, I don't know. It's a strategy that we're talking about right now. If we keep it a separate element, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that question. Um, I've also provided for you just synopsis of the definition of the elements in accordance with the, the Florida statute. You can review that at your leisure. But I wanna get to the process. So this is our proposed comprehensive plan process. This is the key opportunity to create and implement the vision for the community. Get excited, we. <laughs> and what, what we gotta start with is the analysis. What's the, the current data? Uh, what's the projected data? 
right? What's our existing, looking at different existing planning efforts that are out there or even in our community and statutorily what has changed since 2010. Actually, Kimberly Horn has already <coughs> begun that process and here's another few matrices that you all will eventually get to review. And really statutory processes are like changing definitions, things that are maybe no longer, you know, uh, required. So those kind of changes, they're more simple cleaning up of language type of things and nothing that we really have to put uh, our, our heads too much. But of course, you'll get a chance to look at it. So we coordinate all that analysis. We hold public engagement meetings. We, so we coordinate all of that information and we update our goals, objectives, and policies. This again then creates the framework for our codes, the implementing rules and regulations for the city that implement <coughs> the vision that we come up with in the plan. At the end of all of this, in September sometime or August sometime, you will conduct, we will conduct our public hearings. And that will be the time when you'll have the full plan in front of you and say, yes, we recommend it for approval, I hope. And we pass it on to the city council. They'll recommend it for approval, I hope. That's the proposed plan that we send up to the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity by September 2020. Proposed plan, okay? So this is what we're concentrating on. At that point, just like every other uh, comp plan amendment, the stakeholders and DEO, they look at it, they have 30 days to comment on it, they bring it back to us, and then the city council will, will vote to, for the final adoption. Unless there's changes that are required, then we'll, we'll go through some more iterations. <laughs> so the project approach that we're using. You're right in the middle along with staff and project management uh, being provided by Kimley Horn, so you're not alone there. Again, we're looking at existing conditions and future considerations. We call that the DIA, the data, inventory, and analysis portion. That if you look at your existing comp plans, okay, it's all the stuff in the beginning of an element, okay? It's all of the data telling you the population project projections compared to what you have today, how much you have in medium density land use compared to industrial. You know, it gives you all that data and inventory analysis, all right? So you're gonna get new for everything as well as maps. Um, they, Kimley Horn will do a current plan analysis. They'll be going through it just like for the coastal resiliency. They do a statutory analysis, which I just showed you. But they'll also look at our current plan to make sure it's consistent and compliant with our codes and with the, you know, with with um, uh, what we're doing today. We get community engagement is going to happen. Then we take all of that, shake it up and spit out the draft comprehensive plan. Sound easy? On board? There we go. Um, so the things we're analyzing, I think I've already kind of explained it. You, know, you have population of today, population <coughs> projections, population trends, uh, housing needs, land use of today, land use uh, surrounding us, um, uh, things that we may want to consider and changes of, of land use categories. Uh, coastal resiliency and parks and rec we've already tackled, so we're, we're above the curve there. I don't have environmental on this list, but of course environmental, things of that nature. So that uh, includes that uh, analysis of current data, right? For the present data. Say, I'm, I'm sorry again? Analysis of the present uh, data. The present data, yes, yes, sir. So they look at the existing, but, but we, we look at what's... Um, uh, uh, projected into the future for populations or looking at, let's say, um, the MPO's uh, um, 2020, it's not a 2020 plan, their, their projections for DOT and MPO, the road, roadways, what's going to happen in the future, 
Uh, they have a greenways plan. We just did a US-1 corridor study. What does that incorporate? What do we want to put in our transportation here? Uh, environmentally, what I mean, we've got a lot more land, I believe, that is, is in preservation, probably less, less wetlands and, and gopher tortoise burrows, but you know, we, we, we all show that new data and analysis in maps and in tables, okay? So what, what we need to do together is basically coming up with the vision based on this analysis, getting help from our public engagement process. What are the top level goals, topics that we feel are important for the community and bringing it forward. And I'm going to give you a good example of that. I say three to five because if you look at fu the future land use element in existence today, there's about four goals, four or five goals, about four goals. Those are like the top level ideas that, that back 10 years ago <clears throat> moved us forward. And from that, what are the objectives of those goals? I don't want you to get lost in having thinking that you're, you're going to have to wordsmith everything. It's really important that we get an overall answer to, again, what's the big vision, what's the high level topics that we really think that we need to incorporate or change in the existing, okay? So I, I will, if, if you want to help me wordsmith, I will take that offer, certainly, but I don't want you to get lost in the fact that, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to help you rewrite every policy. Um, so again, what are the goals aligned with these topics? Are they citywide <coughs> goals that we wanna deal with and, uh, or are they area specific and what are the shared values of the community? We're gonna take these elements in groups, okay? So you're not gonna have to take the whole thing at once. You'll see in your packet that we're, we're, we're dividing them up into compatible elements that we can, we can share the data and, and the, the questions together. So what I'm su suggesting is that once we have all the data inventory and analysis, which our consultant is doing, you will receive that information. You will be able to remember the matrices that you receive for the coastal resiliency changes, <clears throat> matrices such as this, where it has the, the data, the element, I don't, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, so you'll, you'll get that with the required statutory changes. We'll conduct work, workshops with our stakeholders on these grouped elements, <clears throat> and then we'll incorporate the vision's goals and then you'll be able to look at the final matrices, right, for the changes per the, the, the data analysis and the stakeholder input. So far, so good? Mm -hmm. um, what we're planning on doing, here's tonight's the kickoff. We'll have monthly updates and reviews two weeks prior. If I recall correctly, you all asked me, when we start this process, you want that package two weeks prior to the meeting so that you have plenty of time to review it. And so we heard you and that's what we've placed in our schedule. Um, we'll have the workshops and then at the very end, you will have your public hearing giving us the findings and draft plans. Stakeholders, again, we're gonna be having about six workshops, six opportunities. Um, every workshop will be different elements. Um, and we are going to be um, uh, taking into consideration our advisory boards. For instance, the NRB would like to be able to, as part of their uh, regularly scheduled meeting, to have a workshop and invite stakeholders um, that are in tune with our <coughs> conservation and coastal management um, stakeholders in the community so that we can vet those high level ideas with them and get some direction, of course, then it's brought back to you all for the same type of workshop. Uh, we're gonna be utilizing our Parks and Rec board with the Parks and Recreation element too. So we're gonna be utilizing them. We're hoping to have online surveys. Our, 
at leisure, sir. That's right, sir, yes. But the board is still Parks Rec and Parks and Recreation Board. They're still the Parks and Recreation Board. Um, we're hoping to utilize our website and our Facebook to reach more of the community and to have possibly some online surveys, ask some pertinent questions, some leading questions. You all can help us come up with those, of course. And then the City Council, we'll be having a, a kickoff meeting with them also, basically the same presentation, letting them know what we're doing. They will be receiving the monthly reviews and updates same time you do, because we don't want them at the very end in September to get 600 pages and go, what the heck is this? I can't read all of this, what have we done? So we wanna keep them in the loop the whole entire time and give them opportunity to give feedback too if they, if they feel the need. This is our proposed timeline, okay? Tonight's the presentation, next month will be the city council presentation. Everything is a workshop. There's no public hearing until the very end in July or August for the final draft. Then that's a public hearing, that's when you make a, a decision. In, the, in all of these other meetings are workshops where we're going to have open discussion, okay? Um, and we're doing these, all of these dates are in uh, accordance with your regularly scheduled meetings. So I, because I didn't want to have to pull you away in a separate night. And also this room is used often. NRB, uh, same, and uh, Parks and Rec, they all, they're their regularly scheduled meeting dates. You are welcome to attend um, those meetings uh, or monitor them from home. Um, you can attend all of the workshops, I encourage you to, and provide your input and receive all the data that you can. I believe that's where I ended it. Um, so questions, but I'll go back if anybody needs anything. <coughs> this is gonna be part of a regular meeting, so will it be after any uh, site plans or anything like that will it be the secondary part of the meeting so we don't hold up the public? Correct, thank you. Okay. Good, good question, Mr. Roth. That's something that Dory and I are seriously considering. Um, and so as we move through our, our schedules, we're, we're saying, well, if, you know, for instance, the LPA meeting on February 6th is a workshop, then in, in two weeks you have another meeting and that can be for any kind of site plans or other approvals. Sometimes there may be a conflict, perhaps there's a, a site plan that really does need to move forward a lot quicker. We certainly wanna be cognizant of that. And so we would have the meeting, the regular scheduled meeting first. But what we're hoping to do is that we have this workshop and then we have, you know, we're gonna have tables, we're gonna have graphics, you know, engage the community, get their input, get your input. And then if there's business that needs to be conducted, then you can open the meeting for, for whatever purpose that might be. We can do it before or after. Does that work well for yeah, you, Dory? You good? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd say afterwards, if that's any input. After, if there's some other business that has to go on, then the presentation at the end or after that is completed. I understand, yes. I think that's, that's probably the best, best way to go. I I'd like to make another comment. I'm kind of excited about this, kind of looking ahead in the future, seeing where the city that we love may be, you know, 10 or 15, 20 years down the road and, and kind of preserve that. And I especially like on the very first page of your, your PowerPoint, um, a little sense of preserving our past, preparing for our future. I think that's just so appropriate for what we need to plan for. Thank you, but I'm looking forward to it. Good. I'm so I'm I'm glad. It's it's <coughs> going to be a it's an important process, and and you should be kind of excited that you're going to be a, a part of something like that. You know, I mean. <coughs> You know, I, I think um, recently, you know, that's, it's, it's come to our attention as staff that, you know, what we hear, small town, small town, small town values, what does that mean? I think that's a high level topic question I'd like to ask. What does that mean? And, and how do we then incorporate that into the comprehensive plan so that we protect that in the future? 
because we know that we can't stop people from moving down and we know we can't stop people from developing. So what values do we put in place in order to protect that? We have to be able to manage it properly. Correct. Absolutely correct. So and I, I'm sorry. Were we rewriting the whole this here? Well, I wouldn't say you're going to rewrite everything because some of the things. You could stay the same. Exactly. Okay. All right. I, you know, I would say that they haven't changed. I mean, Dor Dory and I were just reading some of the things, and I would venture. Yeah, I just I just glanced through cost of housing. Yeah. Yeah, it was from 2000 to 2019. There's quite a substantial change. <laughs> so yeah. But if you read some of the <coughs> goals, and I would encourage you to at least read the goals of the elements prior to us addressing those elements. Um, I think you'll you'll see that some of them are a little bit of a mouthful, but you know, start thinking what are what's the objective of that goal? What is it? Uh, the, the, the objective of that goal, and are we are we is it still important? And you know, are you making fun of me over here? I heard you. <laughs> so, anyways, we're going to start with the livability workshop, and you may ask yourself, what the heck is that? I just like that term. Okay, AARP actually coined it. Um, not that I get their magazine. <laughs> anyway, um, I get their material. <laughs> you may not. This. Um, but I, I really like, they have a program that's called Livability. Um, and actually, the Senior Resource Center here in Indian River County has taken that on. And I'm hoping that I can bring somebody in from their organization just to kind of give you a flavor of what it means um, as we move forward with it. I like that term because, I mean, livability, I mean, it kind of addresses all of these elements in my mind. What, what is livability to you? So anyways, we're going to start that. That is going to uh, pretty much be about housing, land use, and I can't remember the other one. but then uh, our schools, I'm sorry. And then, so when you're, you meet again March 19th, right? You'll be able to really, really talk about it some more and be a little bit more engaged in the future land use needs, the housing needs, po possibly school needs. And um, <clears throat> we can really kind of bring it together. Again, you won't be um, doing any final, um, decisions but it'll be a lot a lot tighter at that point and the same with you know NRB they'll be we're going to be combining the conservation and coastal management elements because that's the other thing we're trying to do is streamline this this book so that it is usable and there's a lot of iterations of the comprehensive plan that other cities have adopted that Dory and I are very excited about that we feel is much easier to follow, to utilize, to refer to, instead of this big book that sits on a shelf, right? So anyways, NRB, we're going to do conservation and coastal management together. Most uh, cities are doing that these days. And uh, so they'll be looking at those elements, and then you'll be looking at those elements again in, in May. <coughs> and um, again, you're, you're more than welcome to come to all of the advisory board workshops too. Every workshop is open to all of you and it'll be advertised as such. Um, but you're, 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 you're hearing what I'm saying to you. You're gonna get two times and the, and the, and the public's gonna get two times to talk about those particular elements. So then um, in April, you'll be looking at uh, mobility, which is the transportation element, and facilities, which is the public facilities. These are your sewer, water, storm water, our infrastructure. And then um, uh, parks and rec, and then again, you have parks and, and, and uh, coastal conservation. You'll only be, we'll only be addressing mobility and facilities in, in one meeting, really. Again, you can bring it up at any time. I don't want to say that, you know, you have one meeting and then you can never talk about it again. But we're only going to have one workshop devoted to it because those facilities are, most of it is out of our hands. So, and it's already established. Um, so anyways, uh, that's the system. Any other questions? And I've taken an inventory of who has a comprehensive plan and who does not. 
And again, I don't, I'm not gonna make copies of all of the data and analysis, unless you really want me to. I, I certainly would be happy to. I was just gonna make copies of the existing goals, objectives, and policies for your review in comparison. Is that acceptable to all, everybody? Yeah. <coughs> Wonderful. Dory, you wanna add anything, or Jim? Uh, of course. This Mr. Roth had brought some paperwork that I recognize. Uh, he had RMA do a, a reinventing the city, a kind of vision thing, and I know they didn't, we didn't finish through with them or something like that. But, or in, in back, I want to say maybe in 2008 or something like that, there was another firm that had done a city vision. Are we using information from that in this? workshops what you're referring to is the CRA master plan <clears throat> okay. so that was only for the CRA um, they certainly will be considering those plans RMA did complete a market analysis mm -hmm. and so they do have a copy of that and we will look at that it's unfortunate that it didn't there was work a out. lot of comments in RMA's analysis uh, that that I think is going to help us in a, in a lot of this as to you know what we have a lot of certain types of businesses and anyhow you I'm mean just, the market analysis yeah. yes i can make that available to you all too i mean it's I on, may still online have my copy mr uh, well actually has you don't have the analysis no, can, can I, you get i don't us think that? we ever got the analysis i'm at least i don't I remember reading that. about it in the paper <laughs> yeah I think it, it is or amazing analysis. Be helpful. Well, and, and, and it was, actually, yeah. actually, um, you all wouldn't have received it because it was a CRA uh, okay. project. They presented to us also. I remember that. Did they? Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I, we had a we had a workshop. They did a workshop for us, right. and you all were were okay. invited. Absolutely, you're correct. I'm sorry. Okay, let me make sure you all get a copy of that. Anything else? Um, we hear a lot of terms and a lot of different studies. And I know this is kind of a big umbrella question. Is it possible to say, all right, we're, this is a project we're working on. It is called this. We had an ear project, we had a CRA, and we keep hearing these different, all I wanna know is for sure, uh, so we know how these interact. I know we're working on a comprehensive plan do any of these other projects overlap, as like Mr. Reyes was saying? It, they they, comp, they should complement each other. And, okay. and just to, I'm trying to get back to the slide, Mr. Roth. Um, the ear was actually a, an update to the comprehensive plan, okay? So, in 2010, the city stated, we're gonna do some evaluation and appraisal based amendments to the comp plan. They didn't do that big, heavy rewrite update, we're gonna look at the whole thing. They, they did um, more of a statutorily ran type of update, I presume, I wasn't here. Um, so the year is actually a part of your existing comprehensive plan. Okay, so, yes, so that's sir. all encompassing and all these others will play into it. That's correct. That's just what I wanted to make sure. And then the, C the existing CRA master plan is actually, an, it's, it's a nice plan. Um, and we continue to work on that and, and you're more than welcome to, to look at it, of course, and, and consider it in this update of the comprehensive plan. Because again, this is the master plan for the city. So it includes the CRA because the land use, the transportation, everything's gonna happen in this for the CRA too. Um, so it's actually a better process that we do the comp plan first and then update the CRA master plan in the future. But the market analysis is good and I will make sure you all get a copy of that. Thank you. I too am excited. This is excited on my face. That's what it looks like. Um, I think this is my second go around, maybe third go around with the comp plan um, oh, really? rework. And I, I'm, 
I'm very much looking forward to a more manageable comp plan that is more realistic as opposed to being um, <clears throat> full of lots of wonderful words that are not really functional. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. Well, when um, our first, maybe our first workshop, I'll have some examples of, of some comp plans that we're, we really like. And so you guys can get a flavor for, you know, what other cities are doing and how they're streamlining them and really making them very focused. Would it be too soon to ask how you mentioned at the beginning that you want to combine capital improvements and delays? Um, and that was one of my notes from the training we had from the trainer that came here. Mm -hmm. could, you, could you elaborate a little bit on that, uh, on how you plan on maybe using that? Well, my desire, and my consultant and I are still talking about it, <laughs> he has a lot more experience writing comprehensive plans than I do, but it's not a required element. We have it today, so we certainly can, can, can do that. Again, I'm trying to look for it. Um, but by Florida statute, you have to update the CIP every five years. And so uh, I believe that there's a way that you can, so then you have a CIP in, in just your public facilities and your transportation. Am I right, Jim? for the CIP and the comprehensive elements. You have to update it every five years. The city does it automatically, of course. So I don't know if it makes sense to have it a separate element. We'll have to discuss that further with the um, consultant. Okay. I'm open to whatever works. If you have a preference, Mr. Reyes, please, we'll you know, vo voice it at that time when he, I'm you know. just curious, because he did bring it up at the beginning. And I know it, they mentioned to be very limited on details on that. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's almost like a hidden element in there to me. <laughs> so I'm just curious on how that would work. Well, and I'm kind of curious, too. Obviously, I'm stumbling over how this would work, because if I've updated every five years, why am I putting in? I, okay. Is it something maybe we just reference in each element? And I think that might be something you do Probably is just reference. It affects it. Yeah, I think you could do that. It. For instance, you reference the CRA master plan if you have a CRA, you do, but you don't incorporate it in. Because if anything you incorporate in the comprehensive plan in order to change it or modify it, you have to do hearings, you have to send it up to DEO. <coughs> it's a process. So we can reference separate documents and not incorporate them. But again, okay. I'll rely on my consultant to keep us honest. All right, thank you. Good? Good. Thank you Good. all so much. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. I'm looking forward to this as a new hobby in life. <laughs> okay. Commissioners Matters. I will mention that I had uh, expressed my concerns about the drainage swales uh, to the, at one of our meetings, and uh, Ms. Frazier did reach out to me by email, and I had not responded back to her yet. Uh, one of the reasons was I was gathering my data, and the uh, second reason to delay my email to you was they took care of uh, quite a few swales in our area. Uh, the contractor must have had a really hard time with it because the swales were way overgrown and you can see that I think it's called Jamaica grass or something already popping back up where they're going to have to redo it right away. Um, we need to get a, a consistent uh, service for that. Um, our yards are getting saturated because the swales aren't working properly. So. Anyone else? No. City attorneys matters? Nothing from me, ma'am. Any Nothing. additional staff matters? No. Okay. Meeting's adjourned. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving.